One time she was watching this show, it was like a poor excuse for The View, and they started talking about domestic violence, right? For the nine millionth time this year, they're talking about domestic violence, just in case, you know, you didn't get the memo, you know? <laughs> Evidently, you know, just some people didn't get it. It's not okay to slam your wife's head into the cupboard drawers <laughs> because she didn't dry the can opener off properly, you know? <laughs> it's gonna fucking rust, right? How do you not know not to do that shit? Do they really have to keep talking about it? Uh, who, who, it's like wife beaters watching for, oh, fuck, ah! Now I get it, ups a daisy, sweetheart, here we go. There you go, oh. So at the end of the hour, they come to the logical conclusion. They're like, there is no reason to hit a woman. There is no reason to hit a woman. And I was just like, really? I could give you like 17 right off the top of my head. You can wake me from a drunken stupor, I could still give you like nine. Dude, there's plenty of reasons to hit a woman. You just don't do it. But to sit there and suggest that there's no reason. Dude, the level of ego behind that statement. What are you, levitating above the rest of us? You're never annoying? Women, how many times have you thought about slapping your, your fucking guy in the head this week? There you go. Every day. You didn't do it, right? Oh, dude, it drives me nuts. There's no reason. There's no reason. Really? No reason? How about this? You marry a girl, you fall in love, you buy her a house. You go to work every day, paying off the house. You come home one day, she's banging the next door neighbor, hands you divorce papers. You gotta move out, sleep on a futon, and still pay for that house that she's gonna stay in. No reason. Good evening. So as I said last time, I'm going to be starting off the podcast with a little bit of an audio thing every week. Uh, that is from Bill Burr. Go check him out on YouTube. Um, go check him out on Netflix. Any way you can. He's probably my favourite comedian, to be honest with you. If not my favourite. Uh, so. What's been going on this week? Well, have you ever had a job or a person in your life, mainly a job, where you have, it doesn't seem to be to, to, to matter how they explain things, you just get stuff wrong, to the point where you're pretty certain that person is just making your shit wrong for the fuck of it. That's what I'm going through right now, and it's really stressful. Um, for those of you who don't know, I mention it every week. But for those of you who don't know, I'm heading to America, hopefully before the end of 2020, um, to do a master's in education, so I can start teaching history and um, creative writing and classics. Um, I'm also getting married in June next year in Chicago, so. Um, so basically, it's very important that I get all this stuff right and then I pass all of this stuff. Now, I don't for one second think that he, that, you know, this person would fail me at all. Like, I'm, I'm handing stuff in, I'm getting good grades, you know. Um, like, let, let, let's say there's 15 courses and I've done 10. This is the 10th one. In the other 9, I've gotten an A star. Like, a, like, like a, a distinction grade. So, you know, they're not going to kick me off the course or anything. Um, it, but it is extremely frustrating, especially because my wife actually had a lesson with this person just last year, just last year. And when I'm getting marked down for my work, and he's saying it's it's too complex, it's too large, it's too it's you know the kids aren't going to get this. It's like okay, cool. And then I look at her work that she got an A for last year, and for some reason hers, like. Even by her own admission, hers is not as good as mine. And she was flabbergasted. She was like, why, why is he telling me to do all this all over again? Like, yours is better than mine. And I was like, yeah, I know. It is. Like, I didn't want to say that. But, like, yeah, it, I know. You know, it's only better than hers because she literally got sick of him and started phoning it in. Because she's actually a better teacher than me. I think so, anyway. Um, so, yeah, I'm just, I'm just not sure what to do at the moment. So, I'm just going to hand stuff in, you know. He'll give it me back. 
I'll redo it, he'll give it me back again, I'll redo it, he'll give it, and I'll just do that until finally he gives up. And I get my grade, essentially. But that's the main the main reason why work's been so hectic. And I can't wait for Friday when I can finally hand in my stuff. Um, and I can say goodbye to it forever. I can go, yep, yeah, fuck this, see you later. And never think about it again. Um... It's also a big problem because me and this person have wildly different views on what on education, like completely different. But the unfortunate thing is, he's the person with the power. He's the person who can fail or let people through. This guy is someone who I would I would suggest is living in the nineteen seventies. Um, this is someone who regular on a regular basis when I've been handing in my lesson plans. I'm going to be teaching in quite a uh, a low income part of Chicago. A mainly black or an Hispanic area. Not that those two things naturally need to correlate, but there we are. And regularly he comes back and says, this work is too complex for your kids. They're not going to get this. They're not going to understand this. They're not going to, you know, these are people from poor income backgrounds. These, these, are, these, are, these are people from cultures that don't value this kind of, you know, this kind of in-depth work. Number one, that's racist. Um, number two... Um, by the way, this is this is uh, blatant racism coming from someone who purports to be far left, and this is something I wanted to talk about. And again, um, this podcast is not going to be long. Um, I've got games to play tonight, and I want to chill out, so uh, I'll be around for a little while, but not too long. So one, you know, that's racist, and two, this guy purports himself to be far, far left, and I mean. You know, he has woke agendas. He he says ra- he, he he runs down white people, even though he is white himself. He runs down white people. He hates the British for some reason. Just just runs us down all the time. Okay. Um, when we're on calls together, he shouts at his wife. You know, um, he, he he bangs on about inclusivity and diversity all the time, like all the time. Yet the one person in our conversations who thinks that black kids can do it just as much as white kids in the classroom is the conservative guy, me, talking to him, you know? Um, I would describe myself as as uh, a, a nightmare mix centrist person, really. Um, other people would describe me as, as conservative, but I, I tend to only get described as conservative by far-left people. You know, those are the people who tend to, to view me as conservative. Conservatives view me as a, view me as a centrist, um, which is what I view myself as, actually. Um, so, I take ideas from either side, you know, and I will vote either way. And when you're campaigning, if you have a run for office, you, I'm the person you are aiming your campaign speech at. Me, because um, people like me, because I'm I'm undecided. If I like you and I like your policies and I like your, I like you, I like the cut of your jib. Then uh, I'll vote for you. Essentially, this is what it is. You know, I'm not red. I'm not blue. I'm just me. Yeah, I'm in the middle. I uh, I subscribe to the Chris Rock form of politics, which is you know, if you are all conservative on on things, or you're all liberal on things, you're gonna run out. You're gonna be like getting half the argument all the time. You know, in prostitution. I'm liberal. Yeah, gun crime. I'm conservative. You can't be liberal and everything. You can't be conservative and everything. I just made myself some hot chocolate. It's been one of them weeks. <coughs> but I like. I think I like. I like. I like a Sunday for these podcasts. I like the fact that it's at the end of the week. So I hope your week's been good. Mine's been okay. It was good up until Friday. On Friday, pretty much. Um, This guy emailed me and told me that he was concerned for my progress because I hadn't done several pieces of work. Now, bear in mind, um, because of financial difficulties with the coronavirus and stuff, I was actually behind paying for my course, okay? So eventually, when I paid for my course, I got the money together, I paid for the course, and then I was let back into the course. I was a month behind everyone else at this rate, and this guy was, was, was... nice enough to say, do you know what, I'm going to teach you in my own time. I, 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 have, I have this class that I teach that you're in. You're not, you're not going to be in those classes because you're in the UK, you know. 
and our class is at like 2am UK time, that's not fair. So I'll teach you in my own time, and I thought, this is brilliant. Um, we started off having like an hour, you know, lessons. Then it went to 45 minutes, then it went to half an hour, and now we're at 25 minutes, where he literally just says, um, here's the next piece of work you've got to do, and here's the time you've got to, you, you have to put it in for. So I don't get taught, essentially. Um, I don't get taught in his lessons at all. And I have to rely on my own readings, on my own interpretations to hopefully find my way in the dark and, you know, find my way to a good grade. And then that coupled with the fact that he seems to mark me down for things that other people get A's for, you know, um, really not too sure what's going on there. And trust me, you know, if, if anyone knows me, you know how much of a self-loather I am. If anything goes wrong, and if anything happens, I generally blame myself, and I get really angry with myself very easily, all the time. Um, so, but this, but like, I, I'm just like, well, what do you want me to do? Like, like, for instance, today I handed in a piece of work that was ten questions long. Right? He said, I just want you to do these ten questions. Cool. I wrote answers for these ten questions, and that was it. I, I'm willing to bet you he comes back and says this is all too long. And I'd be like, well, you told me to answer those ten fucking questions, and I did so with two sentences each, you know. Um, so I'm, I'm willing to bet he's going to come back or something like that. So, you know, uh, I just, it, I'm, I'm just, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just, um, anyway, my point was, is that when he said I was behind my work, I, I sent him an email back, and my email was like an essay. By the way, his, his vocabulary on, on emails is terrible. It's terrible. It's all lowercase. He barely contacts you. He, it, it, he will give you one-word answers, no-yes answers, and it's just like, what is this? You're a lecturer. Do your job, sort of thing. But on the flip side, um, he said I was behind my work, and I sent him an email back, and I CC'd the, the dean of the college in, because he CC'd... This is how much of a dick he was. He CC'd the, the dean of the college into the email to me saying he was concerned about my progress when I've gotten A's and everything. So I CC'd the dean of the college back to him and said, um, uh, as far as I'm aware, I'm ahead on everything because I've been going with the due dates that you've given me. Every single due date you've given me, I've handed in my work early. So whose fault is it that I'm behind if the work you've given me, I've done... In and hand it in on time, and now you're saying there's a lot of other work that I haven't done. Like, what? Well, what are you? You know. So, he 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 passes the book a lot, and it's starting to piss me off. But it's only gonna be one more week, and I had my blowout with him on Friday. I, I I kid you not, this is like an essay, and I numbered everything. I numbered all of my complaints about him. I spent number one, he, you know, subheading text, number two, subheading text, number three, subheading text, and I broke it all down, just how bad of a teacher he is, and, um, you know, lo and behold, normally he gets in touch with me to organise a, a, a class for the next week, he hasn't this week, because it's our last week, so I'm thinking he's, he's happy to get rid of me, to be honest with you, and I, the feeling's fucking mutual, let me tell you, um, so yeah, I can't wait to kick people like that out of education, I can't wait to just get them out, just sling them out. To, you don't don't need you here anymore. You can go take your fucking racist views. Take your, take your. It's not it's not even it's not even ballsy racism. Do you know what I mean? At least at least with a Nazi, I can look at him and go, yeah, you're a Nazi prick. But at least I, at least I know what you're about, and I can just avoid you, if need be. It's people like this who try to fly under the fucking radar that really piss me off. It's people who try to just seep in there like a fucking disease under the radar with these low key racist views that are insidious. See, a Nazi, you can just you can just you can just walk away. Because you know, you can see him coming. He's the guy with the swastika on his forehead. Okay, get rid of him. Don't want to don't talk to him. It's people like this who infect modern society and go in under the radar and start spreading these stupid views that because of the, the colour of a kid's skin or his economic background, he won't be as good or she won't be as good in the classroom as someone else. Fuck yourself. Anyway, that's all I've got to say on that cunt. Let's move on to... Uh, Happier things. So the campaign for talent is going well. Um, everything's written now, pretty much. Um, I'm sending out the realms of Kaelden tomorrow. 
maybe even tonight after I finish tonight's week, after I finish this. So fucking hell, hot chocolate's good, isn't it? So and I think in the start date's gonna be in mid December sometime, so I'm thinking what'll be nice is um after I've handed in all my work we get started on the on the the live stream of the of Europe Universalis. I think it is gonna be Europa Universalis. I think with um with with Crusader Kings three, or even though it's a good game. It's too RPG, as as in it's too it's too in depth. And I think people won't make enough progress as we go through the game. I want I want to see the map changing. Because I probably won't be playing in it. Here's the thing, you know, I I'm probably gonna be um streaming it and locking in on people um and commentating on it rather than doing anything else as I get drunk, essentially. Um so yeah, that's gonna be what I'm going to be doing, and that's going to be for everyone to get together and start getting to know each other, and uh, before we do the role-playing campaign, which will be sometime in mid-December is when we're starting that. So it should be really cool. Then hopefully I move to the US soon after that, and we'll be doing st stuff on my new computer, which is going to be really cool. And we get all that sorted out and, and, and not on the way, so I'm really looking forward to that. Um, in terms of gaming, yeah, so as I said before, like like struggling to start things i'm going to start um i'm going to finish dragon age inquisition you know i'm going to make it make a point of doing that um simply because i want to you know just just, just, just i just want to um, but i think in terms of streaming i might have to knock knock dragon age inquisition on the head unfortunately because it's just too big a game it's so massive and i can't stream every night you know um because i'm just going to get exhausted so I'm going to stream uh, Ghost of Tsushima when I can this week, because I love just jumping into that game. Or I might do Assassin's Creed Valhalla. We'll see. That brings me on to Assassin's Creed Valhalla. It's shit. Um, in terms of... Listen, listen, I, I've spoken to Steady about this, and you will meet Steady in the in the role-playing campaign and in Europe Universalis, and you might come in on some of our, on some of our podcasts, this podcast... Um, next few weeks, we'll see. Um, but in conversation with him, and even this is a guy who loves Assassin's Creed. You know, I've had to say, look, you know, either do Assassin's Creed or do an RPG. This cookie cutter, middle of the road stuff, where where it's got RPG mechanics in there, but no soul behind them. The very reason why RPG mechanics work so well, and AAA companies don't get this. The reason why uh, tr uh, RPG mechanics work so well in games is because there's feeling behind them. So in Dragon Age, for instance, you know that, that plus two effect you've got to your strength, that may just be a number, but in your head, that's because you've, you're a big, meaty boy. And you've been training to be a big, meaty boy for a long time. And so now it's represented in game that you're doing more damage because you're a big, meaty boy, right? In Assassin's Creed, your, your character doesn't change, looks-wise, race-wise, and there, there's no right call, core, uh, attributes so there's only like this weapon does more damage than this one why well because it's got a purple outline on the name right okay you know and and i i was sick of youtube and this is what i want to want to say is the corruption of youtubers when they're talking about video games um i i am sick of them i am sick of youtubers talking bullshit uh, because they're paid off by developers. Um, Co-Carnage, I'm looking at you, especially. I'll get to him in a second. But um, in terms of Assassin's Creed Valhalla, all I was seeing was that there's lots of choice and consequence in all of these quests, and, and it's kind of like The Witcher 3. First of all, how dare you use The Witcher 3's name in vain, right? Num that's number, number one. And number two, they kept showing the same quest, to the point where I was getting very suspicious. And it's this quest, I'm sure you've seen it if you've seen previews for, for Assassin's Creed Valhalla, where there's this girl, and she's looking at a tree, and it's got no leaves on it but one leaf. And when Ivor says, you know, why are you here? She says, well, my father said he'll come back from the wars when that leaf comes down, so I'm waiting for it to come down. And you can say whatever you want to her. You can tell her the father's not coming back. You can wish her luck and move on your way. You can give her some, some reassuring words, or you can literally tell her to leave because uh, your father's never coming back as like a bitch 
no matter what you say, she tells you to fuck off and you leave. You can then knock the knock the leaf off in game if you want, to which the girl curses you as like an evil person and runs away. That's cool. But that's the only time it's happened to me. That kind of choice and consequence. That's the only time it's happened to me. And it's almost as if these YouTubers have been briefed to cover this one instance to make it seem like every single quest does this. It doesn't. Do not buy Assassin's Creed Valhalla thinking it's going to be a tenth of what The Witcher 3 is. Um, Ubisoft tend to be very big on seeing the successes of other games and going, ha, let's do that, slap it in Assassin's Creed and do it as like a washed down vanilla version of whatever we're copying. And that's what they've done with this again. That's what they've done with this. They, they, they've they've taken the, the formula of Witcher 3 and just farted it out. In, in a big way, they've always been behind the 8-ball Ubisoft. They, with Assassin's Creed, they've always been behind the 8-ball. When, when Skyrim first came out, there were lots of Skyrim uh, people... There were lots of people taking on Skyrim characteristics into their games. Okay, so one of them was uh, Dragon Age Inquisition, ironically, became more open world. And every single game that started coming out was more open world. It's open world this and open world that. And none of them could quite capture the Skyrim magic. Even if they were good games like Inquisition, they just they just couldn't capture that Skyrim magic. Because Skyrim's a very difficult game to try and make. Until The Witcher 3 came along and changed the paradigm again. They they took the Skyrim inspiration, said we want The Witcher to be more open world, and they created probably the best game of this generation. I would probably argue it is the best game of this generation of uh, of consoles. And, you know, it's, and that's fantastic. So now everyone started aping The Witcher 3, right? So, so you've got games now that are weirdly trying to inject more narrative into there and, and things like that. One of them is Assassin's Creed Valhalla, but it has too much uh, of the times where they were trying to ape other RPGs and Skyrim in particular with Origins and, and Odyssey to do anything with, you know, you know and, and that's before I even get into the combat. The combat's shocking, and I'm not sure, and I've said this on stream, I'm not sure whether I was just spoiled by Ghost of Tsushima, because Ghost of Tsushima right now is my game of the year hands down simply because I've never played combat like that before I, I've, I've never played combat to the point where there's literally a bit in the stream and I had to watch it back where I'm having a duel with this Mongol and it's literally we're dancing around each other and, it, and none of this is cutscene none of this is, is like jerky animations it just flows this well you know um, w w our, our swords are ringing off each other, and we're flowing around. We're we're we're, we're dodging each other. We're, we're we're and we're not we're not rolling. It's not one of these like like spammy spam fests where you're rolling around. We're literally just missing each other with our swords, and and it's literally this quick. It's like dodge dodge ding 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 dodge dodge ding 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 dodge dodge ding ding, and it and the AI. Of the, of the of the of the combatant that I'm facing was smart enough to be able to keep up. In fact, it was outpacing me in certain parts. So I had to start. I had to start changing up my attack pattern, which is what you would do in an actual sword fight. And that was the moment where I literally I had completed the game at this point. You know, I was just coming back for more. That was the moment where I was literally just like, okay, this is this is it. This is if combat is not this, it's not good enough anymore. This is this is the new standard. If you can't do this, don't do sword com combat. Do not do sword play in your game if you can't do this. Um, that is my standard. If you are a triple A publisher or triple A developer, that is the standard now. I'm sorry, it just is. You know, um, I'd probably let off something like God of War because Kratos doesn't fight like that and he's got an axe. But anything like you know, say Assassin's Creed or anything like that, that's the standard that they need to aim for. And it, and this goes for Elder Scrolls too. If they do not meet the standard of Ghost of Tsushima, it's not good enough. You combat shit. That's just how I feel about these things. You know, I don't think there's any excuse for a AAA developer that has all the resources in the world when you've been shown how to do it right in such a an easy way. And by the way, Sucker Punch are not that big a company. 
a lot of these companies could go in and say, hey, do you mind us borrowing some of these developers? You know, do you mind us, um, you know, um, uh, you know, renting some of your developers, you know, and getting them in here so, you, so we'll pay you a commission to come in here and build our combat from the ground up, you know, that sort of thing. It's doable. It's doable. They've got more money than God, some of these companies. So, you know, for me, I just honestly think that they, 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 they've shown up a lot of people and I'm really glad that that, that mid-tier developers, um, and, that, and that's, not a, that's not a knock, because a lot of the worst developers out there are, are top tier, like lots of money. I'm only good doing tiers and resources here. A mid-tier developer like Sucker Punch, I love the fact that they're bringing out stuff like this, you know? Um, because this is the point in a studio's life where they're hungry and they're ready to go and, and they're just running at things and, the, and there's no bullshit politics in their games there's no nothing like that it's just they, they just had a premise of we want the player to be like a samurai okay let's do that then and it's my game of the year unless cyberpunk is the greatest thing ever made by a human which it better be considering the, the shit they put everyone through um you know, Ghost of Tsushima is going to win Game of the Year, hands down. On this channel, anyway. And I will put it in this year's award. Because I won't be doing my awards till uh, Probably just before I go to America, to be honest with you. So, um... So, yeah. Yeah. Not a huge fan of, of Valhalla. Not a £60 wasted on my part. But, you know, you live and you learn. And my missus will enjoy it. She likes games like that. Um, when I say games like that, I mean, like, uh, you know, games where, where there's a big checklist of things to do. She was loving Dragon Age Inquisition, for instance. Um, what else? Um, I want to do a Football Manager stream. How weird is that? How random is that? I want to do a Football Manager stream. I want to stream that game. Because I wanted to do it for so long. Just for a laugh, you know what I mean? Before I go to America, I wanted to, to do a bit of a stream on it. Um, and I I let, uh, I let did a quiz for Creative for, for Sports Interactive, the guys who make it, uh, to decide what, what club you should have, and I came up with Dynamo Kiev. So that's who I'll be going with, is Dynamo Kiev in, in the game. So um, I might play it offline, I might play it on stream. We'll see. If there's interest, I'll play it. Um, what else? Uh, yeah, writing slowed down to a crawl because I'm so busy. But after this week, it'll pick up again, and I'm really glad that um, Cyberpunk didn't come out this week. Gotta say, uh, because I'm I'm gonna be quite busy, and you know Thursday the tenth works for me. To be honest with you, it works for me. So <laughs> that gives me enough time in between to just calm things down after the work schedule and stuff, get things on the go. I'm not gonna stream it. Uh, mainly because I'm playing it on the PS4 and I'm not even playing it on the new PS4. Um, one other thing I would say is, well, my PS4 is new, but it's not the PS4 Pro, you know what I mean? One thing I would say is that people go on all the time about the uh, the fans and the Playstations and the Xboxes going mad. I've had this now for six months, almost, this PS4. I've played Red Dead Redemption 2, I've played... Go, uh, God of War, and I've streamed God of War. I've played Ghost of Tsushima, and I've streamed Ghost of Tsushima, and it's been fine. Do you know what I mean? Like, 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 there's been no sound from it at all. It's really quiet. So I'm not sure what people are going on about when they say stuff like that. To be honest with you, um, maybe the 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 architecture is just just old. Like, I know, I know, um, newer PlayStation 4s, and I don't mean the Pro. I mean when they then when they make new normal PS4s. Later on, um, the, the infrastructure inside of the console does get better. It does get more spacious. Things do get slimmed down and and, and made smaller, even even if the actual case stays the same for more airflow and stuff. So maybe it's that. Maybe it's got better fans. I don't know. Um, but what I will say to you, if you're worried about your console not playing it, if you've streamed anything like Ghost of Tsushima and you've got a decent frame rate and your stream hasn't really you know, slow down, then I'm telling you now, you're going to be able to play Cyberpunk. <laughs> it's going to be fine. You know, um, people immediately were jumping on them saying, oh, well, there's less people in the street. Yeah, there's less people in the street, but I don't notice that. I really don't. Like, like as long as it's like GTA 5, and there's like, you know, so, so it looks like people are living in the city, I don't need 
I don't need the, 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 the Mardi Gras level from Hitman Blood Money. I don't need that. I, you know, I just need a few people in the streets just to convince me that people actually live there. And I'm happy. Spot on. Very happy. So, looking forward to that on the 10th. But that's it. I'm going to leave it there. So, thank you very, very, very much for watching. And I'll be back next Sunday with another one. And I'll speak to you then. Cheers.